Buckle up for another episode of Ghost Facers, a supernatural rewatch podcast. My name is Richard, and sitting shotgun as always is my brother in podcasting, Reed. Oh, what? oh, oh, it's so greasy, huh? Oh my God. Sure hope I don't have a heart attack, obviously. Oh, definitely oh, oh, going to oh, have a heart oh, attack. Oh, 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 oh. As long as nobody touches me, I can't have a heart attack. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, hey, uh, Reed. Oh, oh. Uh, hmm? uh, boop. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the pizza! Oh. He choked to death. We knew it was going to happen. That's Let's the way I always it. wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it to <laughs> Ghosts! Ghost Facers! We're facing ghosts! Your mothers were on! We're ghosts! Ghost Facers! See the kitchen when the kitchen gets hot! Ghosts! We're facing nightmare, we're facing dread Ghosts, ghost facers We're facing faceless, we're facing dead Welcome to Ghost Facers Today we're discussing Season 6, episode number 11 For the first time It's Appointment in Samara <laughs> That's right uh, that's, we... that's when That's when you have Something in your Google Calendar where you need to be in the no never mind i was trying to connect it to the ring and then that felt weird no that was bad that wasn't good i don't like whatever it's obviously it's when you have not an appointment today you have it to samara (laughs) that's when it's that's when you don't know which day in the future it is it's (laughs) samara (laughs) samara I'm glad that we're good at this and uh, we're doing this remotely for the first time in a I don't know if we've ever done this ghost facers remotely we've only ever done a couple of them if we have like all. this yeah. uh, so this also will be great. also this is the first time that we've like had a skip week there wasn't ever an episode last week yeah that's true yeah we have not we have never done this before uh it was which nice. i think now pushes the podcast into 2028 or some shit now so <laughs> i do like that there's also this like impending doom because any time that we take off of it is more time we're putting on to it that's very funny. yeah that's right yeah uh well before we get into today's episode we have a review Ooh. Uh, yes. Uh this one is has the the title Five Slides on the Kinsey Scale. So I think it's just just describing you. <laughs> yeah, I mean aren't there only six positions on the Kinsey scale if you slide five times? You're you're pretty heavy one way. Yes, you or you were very straight thinking you were or at least thinking you were before. <laughs> or I'm going back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really like that. I, I don't, I think this is, this person's name is half true and half made up. Um, but if it's not, this is the greatest name that I've ever seen. Their name okay. is Lore, L-A-U-R, Mas- Master. Wow. <laughs> I Listen, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable, but that's hot as shit. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it very I'm, very I'm, hot. T- I'm torqued up by this review. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I think the review itself is probably going to help too. So let's right, go right, into that. Good. They Get go on. There. Get me there with this review. <laughs> okay. Uh, they say, "Hi guys, loving the show and your relationship." Well, at least it's one of us. Uh, I... <laughs> Fuck you, man! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm playing catch up right now in season four. And I love the banter and endless thirst. I found you when I was looking for some in-depth lore to help me with my uh, fantasy mystery novel series I'm working on. <laughs> I know. That's, I told you. I told you this was going to get you torqued. <laughs> Go on. Don't you think I know what makes my friend come? <laughs> 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 um, okay. Uh, currently titled... Savage Angels, about a group of psychics who are supposed to be working for the gods, but start their, uh, uh, but start to get their own desires and ideas. So happy I found you guys! Amazing. I mean, good lord. They continue. Uh, 
so I'll I'll try to I don't think this really suffers too much or um, spoils anything too much. But uh, I know you haven't gotten to season seven yet, but I just need to say the Hallucifer arc with Sam is one of my favorites. Uh, as someone who suffers from delusions and dissociative episodes, I felt some comfort. Uh, I felt so comforted by Sam and Dean, uh, but and how far Dean would go to keep Sam sane and safe. And how much trust Sammy puts in his big brother it really solidified for me how much these two mean to each other and what they would do to sacrifice in each other's names. Cool. Love, uh, that. Love uh, that. If if you ever need help understanding what Sam may have been mentally going through during those times, feel free to reach out for some firsthand experience. Always oh, keep fighting. <laughs> Always keep fighting. And I hope your thirst for Jensen stays as strong as ever. Love your friendly neighborhood Wincest shipper lore. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's that's a pretty ballsy thing to just throw out right at the I end know. of the review. Yeah. Uh, love Wincest. Wink, wink. See you guys. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Hang up. Uh, yeah. Wow. Holy cow. No, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's funny, obviously, you know, uh, it's cool that those things in the show, obviously the show has a fan base that connects to lots of different things. I think it's always cool when those things like resonate with people that have like real experiences. We're, all, we're talking about ghosts and shit all the time, but it's cool when it connects for people in a more real way. Absolutely. Uh, but also, okay. I do want to I do want to just say for the record, if anyone out there, if your name is like Laura or Lauren or something like that, if you just go L-A-U-R, that is the hottest way to spell like <laughs> a name. Is that I don't just know, because I don't of know. lore? Because of the meaning like no, L-A-R. not just because no, not because it sounds like lo- like the word lore. For I don't know, something about that really works for me. I'm a writer, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah you're also just really into data's brother also i think in general i think names like laura and lauren are like the hottest names oh interesting not i don't know name. why couldn't uh, tell you but definitely not your wife's name uh all right um <laughs> yeah i'm also not the hottest guy like you know <laughs> Is my name Henry Cavill? No. Ask my wife. Could have fooled me. Uh, All right. Let's start talking about today's episode. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Uh, All right. This episode aired December 10th, 2010. We are are blazing towards the end of this year. This might be the last episode of 2010. We're getting into 2011. I'm excited to talk about that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, Written by... Oh, what a dream team. This is written by... Sarah Gamble and Robert Singer. So Sarah Gamble is the showrunner at this yes, point. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. when she takes over. Um, and this episode was uh directed by um you, I mean, you know, when I watch uh, uh Big Mouth and I'm just like, that's my crawl. It's it's my crawl, Nick Kroll. It's a my, it, Mike Mike Kroll. Yeah. Yeah, it's a micro. Oh, okay. That's cool, man. <laughs> hey, nice. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard that was good. Yeah. yeah. This is why people subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This chemistry is popping. You, people <laughs> love our relationship. Uh, well, you'll be happy to hear that this episode was viewed by an estimated 2.27 million viewers. Oh, Last... we're back in the saddle, baby. That's right. Last week was 2.15. We are we are skyrocketing up. Was last week back over two as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we're yeah, we're well, we're doing yeah, good. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking we're back. <laughs> yes. Uh so I sent you the promo already. So we don't have to watch it now. Yes. But let's talk about this fucking promo because I was I was very happy with this promo. I thought it was fine. I thought it was so fun. I thought it was so fun to be like, like they're both dealing with debt. And like, he was, was very like funny. And like, they played off of the, like, it was, it was good. I thought. Here, here's why I, I was, I, here's why I think it's fine. 
I watched the promo and yeah. watching it unlocked a thing I hadn't thought of about the episode. Okay. And so I'm I'm being slightly unfair to the promo. But watching the promo, which is like well edited and stuff like that, I kind of realized that this episode does two different things and only gives each half effort. Really? You um, think so? And, and we'll get into it because this episode this episode is is kind of like a schmaltzy like learn a lesson piece and also like a fucking <laughs> horror. Yeah. And and I actually don't think they gel. Interesting. All right. We'll we'll, we'll get into it at the end of it. Uh yeah. but before we have to talk about international titles. Yes, obviously we have to because you're in charge, but whatever. And because people love it and they talk about it, how much they love it all the time. I mean, you know, next to some other yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking asshole. Um, so just because I'm doing the friend thing, because people love our relationship. Your lore this week isn't about Samara, right? It's not. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to. I appreciate check. you checking in. Be- I also appreciate that you know the people are on my side. <laughs> Uh, I think the oh yeah, because the vo- the vocal minority spoke up. Big surprise, yeah. All right, Twitter of the Ghostfacers fans, <laughs> I'm really afraid of you. Just for that, you know what? I'm fucking oh, just wait. <laughs> now I'm coming for you. <laughs> Don't have I to walk. <laughs> yeah, well, you're definitely not gonna run. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> You piece of shit. Uh, All right. (laughs) International titles. So the title is a reference to an old Middle Eastern story where a Baghdad merchant sends his servant to the marketplace. The servant runs back home and explains that he was threatened by death while at the market. The merchant sends the servant off to hide in Samara, then goes to the market to talk to death. Death explains that he had not threatened the servant, merely that Death was surprised to see the servant in Baghdad, for we have an appointment tonight in Samara. Which I think is kind of rad, because then it's like, yeah, you sent him to his death. Like, that's... It's a... (laughs) A classic um, destiny thing, right? Yeah. Like um, Oedipus Rex, right? Yeah. He's born, his parents are like, oh, he's getting, like kill me and marry you let's send him away and then he doesn't know who they are when he meets them in the crossroad he kills his dad and then he gets to the city he's like the queen's fucking hot and he checks up with his mom and it's like you can't escape your destiny even though the you've tried you've tried to uh, avoid it oh well, that's why they kept saying i have an edible complex oh yeah yeah nice I mean, <laughs> I guess. Uh, all right, let's talk about the international titles this week. We've got three titles available to us. The first okay. one. Now, all three are pretty on, uh, like pretty in line with I think w- w- what's going on here. Um, and I think that because this is a story from Baghdad, it's a pretty like I, I'm guessing it's like a worldly story because if it's made it all the way to North America, my guess is it's probably made it to other parts of the world. I mean, it's possible, but it's just how well people know their myths and things right. like that, right? I mean, it's certainly in terms of in terms of like tragically falling for your destiny kind of things, Oedipus Rex is a way more known story in Western yeah. society than than Samara is, but who knows, right? So I think it is very interesting though the 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 way that like language uh affects these titles because they're all kind of saying the same thing but the way that okay. like I, the way that i think culturally they approach them is sort it's a very small differences with each one but i think it, right. it, it, it very much speaks to each of their cultures i think quite well so okay the, fir- the first title is the german title oh okay um uh don't be late for this meeting <laughs> uh so it's interesting so the, the 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 german title is death waits in samara sure okay 
which yeah. I think is interesting because it's like uh, uh, rather than like oh like playing to like the mystery of that story or like the I- irony of that story which is like you send a person to escape death and that's where you send them it's like this one's like oh no like that's where death is going to be like you like like you are just like it, it's very much like acknowledging that the story is you're you're going to your death rather than like yeah. destiny is inevitable. <laughs> classic, classic Germany. I know. I thought that was really funny. Okay, the next one is the French title. Uh, my dinner with death. <laughs> my my dinner with on death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh no, the uh uh the French title is Appointment with Death. Or sure. Rendezvous avec le monde. Very, very saucy. I mean that makes it sound so saucy. I know that's kind of why I liked it a lot, because it's a little bit saucy and it's French. Uh and then the final title, it's a Hungarian tape, baby. Um I like this uh, one. I'm so I'm death, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> no. If you thought the last one was saucy, the the interpretation of this one is dating with death. <laughs> <laughs> But is that is that just like it's not just like a translator messing up where like appointment and something about like the date yes. becomes the word dating. I, I think that is what, what it is, but I just like the idea of just being like <laughs> I mean look, he he doesn't really pay for dinner, but he's killer in bed. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, listen, you just saw the pitch of the room. <laughs> Dating with death. Death try. Death tries dating. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah. I'm, so, like, a date with death essentially is. What this I'm is both doing. my hammer and my sickle. <laughs> He's communist. Yeah. Yeah. And death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Marxist death goes on a dating scene. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So. There is no featured music for, uh, from this episode because it is both extreme sides of drama. And so they don't really play yes. into the fun sort of like rock and roll nature of the show. Uh, but TV Guide describes this as Dean seeks out death to get Sam's soul back. But Dan, but Sam decides he doesn't want it returned and tries to pr- a protective spell to keep his soul out of his body. I mean, that's actually pretty good. It says what the episode is without the like big pieces of what yeah. the episode is. I mean, on the scale of these things, yeah, yes, that's one. Of it's the actually ones. not bad. I, I'm I'm looking forward to talking about it. But before we do, why don't we open up Dad's journal and learn about some of the real world lore? I'm very yeah. Interested. Let's see what the lore says about patricide. Oh, whoa! All right, yeah. Let's baby. Let's get into it. <laughs> patricide, of course, is when you kill a Patrick. <laughs> um, I'm just saying that, like between SpongeBob and Patrick, I'm on Patrick's side. I killed SpongeBob's dad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Did I don't know if I've ever told this joke on this podcast, and it won't make sense to literally anyone. It's a patricide joke. Uh, no, it's a joke about SpongeBob and Patrick. Um, so. It's this is a joke literally for anyone who grew up in in uh near or in Detroit in two thousand and like four. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so everybody else will will see you in thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh. So anybody who has will like this joke. Uh. <laughs> why does why does SpongeBob hate Mayor Quamby? I don't. I don't know. I can't believe you don't know because uh, uh, Quamby kill Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who gets that joke, please write in because uh, I, I need someone to laugh at that. <laughs> it was Mayor Quamby kill Patrick. Yeah, he he uh, he got uh, he got removed from office because of a bunch of like <laughs> shitty shit that he did and like I uh, stole a bunch of money and stuff, but. <laughs> so specific yeah i love it it's the best so type of joke. not even for you it's just for me yeah yeah i mean <laughs> you somehow found the narrower <laughs> niche all right so let's talk about patricide 
So patricide refers to killing one's father. So it comes from nice. the Latin um, pater, which means father, where we get like patron and paternal and all those kind of words. Hello, mother. And, um, Hello, pater. Here I am at camp. Gets... Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and then the the side part of the word, I don't know how you pronounce it in Latin, probably like kide or something like that means a cutter or killer nice so um so it's a sub form of a thing called parasite uh which is the killing of a parent or a close relative so in on the scale of murder which is historically a sin and bad to do i almost put that in air quotes um, <laughs> I was gonna put quotes around a sin because I'm that guy, but then I was like, "Oh no, like it's bad. I don't want it to come off like a pro murder." But I think sin is, is sin just related to religion. Like, is that the only? Well, I I just my instinct anytime religion is invoked <laughs> is to heavily air quote it. But <laughs> um, yeah, just for the record, we are not pro murder. <laughs> uh, just want to I mean... be clear. I'm gonna murder that. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> jesus yeah yeah unless we're talking about those cum gutters <laughs> you mean your throat <laughs> i think that i can't stop telling people <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop telling people stop making it a thing that i need to tell people that you've <sighs> said oh well um on the scale of murder, patricide was considered to be like particularly taboo. <laughs> um, apparently, I don't know how true this is, but according to Cicero, like the, the philosopher, the yeah. historian, um, patricide was the only crime in ancient Rome for which a civilian could be sentenced to death. Um, which is interesting. Uh, the taboo extends a little bit into like myth and story. So yeah. we talked about Oedipus Rex before. You know, in that one, part of what happens is that he does kill his father. He, he kills the king. He doesn't know that it's the king. He meets him at a crossroads. They have an altercation. He kills him because he was sent away as a child because of this prophecy that he would kill his dad, marry his mom. <laughs> You know, he doesn't know who he is. He meets this guy in the road. And he kills him in a fit of rage. It turns out that, you know, that check part of yeah. that prophecy is done. It's weird that and so, and that was the weirdest episode of the dinosaurs that we'd ever seen. <laughs> I always thought the, the like Oedipus, Oedipus yeah. Rex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what they call me if I was a dinosaur, Oedipus Rex. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, after he kills his dad, that kind of is the rest of the story. <laughs> wow. Except it's with his mom. <laughs> so, I mean, look, look, any port in a storm. <laughs> Jesus. What the fuck? <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. Um, <laughs> so, interestingly, you know, we talk about about, usually when we're talking about Oedipus Rex, we're talking about that bit with his mom, you know, Freud, the Oedipal complex, all that kind of uh, thing. But part of the Oedipus complex is the kind of like the hatred of the father thing. So even Freud kind of connected the patricide idea in there. Um, now he rolled it into like, hey, we all have these thoughts, right? We all want to fight our moms, right? right? Kill our fathers. And we want to kill our dads and fuck our moms, yeah. right? Yeah. Um I think there's also an argument to be made in the case of um the tragedy of Macbeth that the killing of King Duncan is a kind of metaphoric patricide. We don't know very much about Macbeth's family. Duncan is very kind to him, you know, makes him Thane of Gloms, all these kind of like uh, things, and then he, you know, he kills him, takes the throne. Right now, um, 
But I'm going to double back to that in a sec. So in Chinese belief, those who commit patricide or matricide even would be killed by light, like a lightning strike. Like it, it was so taboo beyond just murder. It was like you're disrupting the natural order, a, a phrase that comes up in this episode a lot. And that's such a big theme in Macbeth is the natural order, right? Now, part of the theme of that play is that, you know, you don't kill the king. And, the, you know, sure. when it was written, it was like kind of tumultuous time for the monarchy in England. And yeah. Shakespeare was like, remember, don't kill the monarch. Uh, it was kind of propagandist a little bit. But the more important piece of it is that it's not just about usurping a, a monarch is that it, it, I do think Duncan is this kind of like patriarch thing. You're kind of adding this layer of like someone who's taking care of you, who's like shown leadership and mentorship and stuff like that. And then you, you kill them. That's like the ultimate taboo. Right. Um, and so, so patricide has this like extra stank on it. And I, I have a suspicion too, that part of that is, has to do with, you know, so many of, at least in Western culture, our societies are patriarchal mm. that you, you put this emphasis on how bad patricide is to be like, don't kill me and inherit what you'd get. Like, you sure. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I, there's a somewhat cynical side of me. That's like, you highlight that to keep like the structures in place. And because you know, the temptations there, if the, if the father is the one that holds all of the, the holdings, the wealth, the stuff like that, then you know what I mean? Then like, that's where the temptation is. It's like, no, but definitely not patricide. Don't do that. Of course. So yeah, there you go. Killing your dad. That's the lore. Can I, can I just ask you one question? I have not killed my dad. No. Uh, is it every time that you get on a bed, is that called matricide? <laughs> <laughs> Wait so long to say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Because my mattress is a little fucking sub. It likes it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you could have just said I only fuck it because I murder on there. I'm fucking. I Jesus. In bed. I mean, I think we could all tell by my <laughs> voice that that's that. I'm just happy to be there. I'm a podcaster. I think it's <laughs> unlikely that I'm slaying. You know? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, with that, why don't we get into the plot of this episode? Yeah, why don't we? <laughs> you can't admit that's a good joke. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, all right, we begin with the then. We've got uh, introductions about death and his ring that Dean uh, has obviously gotten his hands on. We haven't really talked about it since that had happened. Um, yeah. We've got uh, a discussion about Reapers and more specifically Tessa, uh, who we haven't seen uh, in like a, a, about a, almost a season, I think, probably. Um, we've got the introduction. And probably more. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, because, yeah, she returned on that one other episode besides the she's been in two, I think, so far. But she wasn't even in that one with all the Reapers where uh, no. Lucifer summons death. Right. Yeah. She, it's been a while. Um, also, uh, we get Balthazar, uh, and he and his discussion about the value of souls. Um, Sam's soul that is obviously locked up, and, we, and we've been talking about that all season, needing to get that back. And that is uh, the then, which is interesting because we go into the now without a cold open, really. I mean, we get one, but it's not much of a cold open from what we're used to. It's not disconnected from the boys. Like, it is directly involving Dean. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we see Dean go uh, uh, into uh, an old, like a Chinese grocery store, gr grocery store, um, and uh, and he's. I mean, uh, is it a Chinese grocery store, or is yeah. it just a grocery store with a Chinese like guy working there? No, no, no. There was all like um, uh, like Chinese uh, like language and stuff all in the front of it and things. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And there was like there was like ducks hanging in the front and roasted ducks and stuff like. <laughs> Gotcha. Things that are, I think are common in like Chinese delis and whatnot. 
Uh, fair, fair. I just, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I trust <laughs> me, I'm trying to, I, I'll get you one day. Uh. <laughs> um, and Dean is going to see an old acquaintance of his father, Dr. Robert. So if you Yeah, think- this guy is barely a doctor. Well, I mean, one, he is, do- it, it, his name is Robert because it's Robert England. It is. Uh, uh, Holy shit, that is Robert Englund. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, it's Freddy Krueger, baby. Uh, it's <laughs> when uh, when doctor when the doctor opens the apartment door, you can see the apartment is number four. Um, I don't. This is the thing that they've they've uh, repeated a few times, and it's not directly connected to the the fact that it's a Chinese building, but the you could potentially say that the it's number 4 because the number 4 is um in in Japanese is she which sounds similar to the word shin which is death but i that, that might be also uh pulling at straws but they've definitely used that a few times i think that they like to use the number 4 um so uh keeping with the theme, the music theme Dr. Robert was actually a, a, a it's a Beatles song from their album uh, yesterday and today. So that that's also a potential connection to the fact that it's Robert England and Dr. Robert is a is a Beatles song. So there, there's a few different connections there. So Dean pays the doctor and his assistant, Eva, who like has no interest, super hot and has complete disinterest. Well, in I mean, even in even in the hall, like first Dean comes in and says, I'm here for and the guy counter is like, go to the back. Dean goes back there. The Doc is there and he's like, hey, I used to stitch your dad up all the time, at least until I lost my medical license. Anyway, <laughs> come back here. Um, but his assistant, who's crazy hot and, and her disinterest might actually make her more hot, which I don't know what that I, says, but... Yeah, I mean, it, the only thing that would add to it is if her name was like Lauren or something. Lore? <laughs> <laughs> really finding out this very specific thing about you today which is interesting so am i yeah <laughs> i like that you didn't know it and you're just connecting the pieces today <laughs> okay uh and he's uh dean is there to get this doctor to kill him and bring him back to life <laughs> yeah and, and dean dean's like have you done this before and he's like all the time bitch <laughs> <laughs> he did not say that it is that is funny though because it's kind of like he's putting him to sleep to go meet with somebody which is does he's i now now that i i didn't clock that it was robert england i feel so dumb for that but did does he say like sweet dreams or anything like that as he's putting him under I, did i miss that i actually don't know and there's no lore uh, there's no like uh, uh behind the scenes trivia or anything like that about that but that would be really okay. interesting but i'm also just in the moment right now figuring out that there is a connection to the fact that it's like he's kind of putting him into a sleep and he's going to go meet with somebody in a dream world yeah he's basically gonna flatline yeah. dean so that dean can find death yeah um essentially the doctor does He's like, point, you got you got three minutes or whatever. You know? Yeah, he does. When Dean does ask him about uh, his success rate, he does say 75%, which is important later in this episode. Yeah. Uh, Bitch. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't make him do that. Yeah, considering Dean says it all the time. Yeah, that's disappointing. It's, it, it's such an odd, like... <laughs> It also feels like kind of a waste of Robert Englund because he's mean, only in this yes. scene. It's like, you got him for this? Yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Um, Dean gives the doctor a letter addressed to Ben and asks him to mail it in case something goes wrong, though. Which is funny because the doctor all then goes, well, like, don't you want... The, nothing's for Sam? And, and he goes, if if this doesn't work, it's like Sam's not going to care anyways. Yeah. Uh, so... The doctor takes the letter and tells Dean that, yeah, he's got three minutes of death before injecting him with something that is going to kill him. Dean then, le- his soul leaves his body and he walks into basically the downstairs, like the the, the entrance of the store and uh, says a spell that summons the Reaper, Tessa. So. Yeah. Yeah. Long time no see. She's looking great, though. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. Also, is it just me or do they have incredible chemistry in this episode? They have. They always have good chemistry. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. It's. I'm just like God. I mean, that's also. I, I'm. I'm wondering if that's chemistry or the two of us have a weird relationship with women who are disinterested in us. 
<laughs> and who, who who kind of like see through someone's bullshit and talk uh, down to them. Uh, uh, um. Anyways, uh, he tells Tessa to contact her boss, Death, and let him know that Dean wants to talk to him, but she refuses. To their mutual surprise, suddenly Death appears behind them and greets Dean. And that's basically yeah. the cold open. Love it. Yeah. So Dean is now trying to make a deal with Death to get Sam and Adam Milligan's soul out of Lucifer's cage. He's just like, Yeah, hey. Dean says, like, I, I assume that you're one of the only beings in existence that can get in and out of the cell. I want to get I want those souls out. But it is kind of funny because he's like, I need to get Sam <coughs> and my brother. At. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I think it's kind of nice that he doesn't forget about, you know what I mean? Like, we sad. haven't really been talking about it other than the context of Michael is also ganging up on Sam's soul. But the fact that Dean is like, yeah, get Adam out too is is sort of nice because that would be such an easy, you know, if they didn't say it, yeah. you'd be like, whatever, he's trying to get Sam's soul back. And then like seasons later fan groups or whatever would be like, man, they never tried to go back for Adam, huh? But, like, it is kind of a nice detail that Dean is like, if I'm going to do this thing that will almost certainly be able to get in, I might as well get all the stuff out that I want, you know? Exactly. And Dean tells the Death that he'll return his ring to him in exchange for their souls. But Death reminds Dean that he was only supposed to borrow his ring in the first place and anyways, he knows where Dean hit it. Like he's just like, you know who I am. Like, like the ring is nice, but like I'm still death. Like I also like that it's been a year and a half and Dean has not returned it. I mean, that is true. Yeah, it's been so long. And he just like, like, did he he had it just like in his like the trunk when like when he was living with oh, he's the... just like, oh, I should text him. I will, I will, I will, I will yeah. <laughs> Oh, but now it's been so long. It would be so awkward. Oh, it's going to be weird if it. I text him about it now. Now it's going to be like, am I, oh, making I it a, am I making it about me if I try and give him his ring back now? <laughs> yeah, he tried to sell. He tried to sell it on Facebook buy and sell, but <laughs> awkward breakup. <laughs> I mean that. Yeah. No. As someone who has sold a gently used <laughs> engagement ring on the Hell Facebook yeah. buy cell. That makes two of us, friend. Uh, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't completely reject Dean's request, however. He tells Dean that he has to make a choice between Sam or Adam's soul. He's basically like, look, he's like, he's like, you're asking a lot of me, and like, maybe if I'm willing to do something, it's not going to be for both, though. <laughs> yeah, he he's, he says, I don't make a habit of bringing people back yeah. from from death. Let alone one. But like... if I, in a flight of fancy, I did, I'd do one, so you better pick. I do like that Dean just goes, Sam. I, he's it's... like, it was a nice try. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <Adam. laughs> like I did my part. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that was like uh, when I was a kid, and I was like asking for like something for me and like one of my siblings. But I'm like, yeah, and I think he wants it too. But I'm like, it, 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 like it, it's like me. Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So Dean tells him that he can return Sam's soul to him, even putting Sam's time in hell behind a wall in his mind, but only if Dean wins their wager. So, yeah. yeah. The wager is Dean has to wear Death's ring and be Death for a day. If he takes the ring off, he loses the wager and Sam's soul stays in hell. I mean, yes, that is, I mean, it, it's, it, I get where Dean's coming from, where it's just like, that's a great deal. But he is, I mean, I was watching this episode with somebody who doesn't really watch Supernatural. And they were, they were exclaiming about how, like, how, like, disrespectful Dean was being to this creature. And, and like, the you and you watch Death be like, huh, like, nobody really talks to me like that. And I think that's part of the reason why he's like, he always, like, lets Dean get away with it. Because he's just like, nobody... Nobody does this. Like, it's kind of interesting. It's like, if like an ant started like talking shit to you, you're just like, I, I mean, this is funny. Like, 
I think that is a big part of specifically Dean, but in general, the Winchester's like charm. Yeah. Is like, you know, they, they treat cast like shit, but it's also like who talks to an angel like yes, that? Yes. Exactly. You know? Um, but before Dean can learn why Death wants him to take his place for a day, Dr. Robert revives him at that exact moment. It literally it's like, why do you want to do it? Because and he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he's like you couldn't have given me like two Five more seconds, seconds yeah. or whatever and he's like you were out for seven minutes and he said three minutes was the minimum like the maximum yeah. that he could give him like i almost double lost my medical license yeah, <laughs> yeah i almost lost my black market license <laughs> yeah yeah uh so dean then tells sam and bobby about his wager with death but Sam is completely opposed to the idea. He doesn't want his soul returned to his body, especially because the wall that Dean proposes to put up in his mind isn't necessarily permanent. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, it's no, don't do that. Like <laughs> here, here's the thing in this episode. And we'll talk about it a, like closer to the end of yeah. the episode is we, we know soul of Sam is kind of a monster but it's he's not wrong they they they're they really like but he's just lacking emotion he's not lacking like mind or yeah. reason and they are fully not respecting his wishes like no, he it's... couldn't be more clear and they're just like fuck it yeah, you don't know what you want. And it's just like, no, 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 I know exactly what I want. This version of me wants this. So, like, I don't know what to tell and, you. And the last scene of this episode makes that so clear. It, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's not a, it's not a great look, uh, honestly. I think, I think, I mean, to, as a counterpoint to what I was saying bothers me about the episode up, up top. The, the counterpoint is the only thing that makes it kind of feel justified is having that Sam's seems, yeah. part of the episode in here where you're like, he really needs this soul. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's like on that edge of like forcing someone into like a mental institution. Like it's, they're a harm on yeah. themselves and society theoretically. And so I think like, and I don't know how I feel about that in general, but I think that's the only sort of like similar thing I can think of. It's yeah. Maybe it just feels more disconcerting because there's no element of like sort of, uh, I mean, he does have impaired yeah. judgment, but not in the way that we would normally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, he tries to uh, Sam uh, basically is like I don't want this to happen and then he like is like all right I'm uh, whatever do whatever you want and he walks away and they immediately find him trying to dig up the ring from the back of Bobby's uh, auto body shop uh, yeah and yeah they've already gotten to it uh, and Dean basically goes yeah he's like I figured this is what you were gonna do and I like the moment because he basically is like this is happening whether you like it or not and he walks past Bobby but and he goes to Bobby's like watch him and Bob you can yeah see it's such a great exchange and Dean leaves and Sam and Bobby go in the house and Sam goes sorry you're gonna lock me in the thing downstairs or whatever and Bobby's like do I have to and he's like no there is such good dialogue between them in this episode, like yeah. between Sam and, and Bobby. Bobby's got some great lines in this. Like I was like, oh, yeah. there's one in particular that comes up partway through the episode where that I, I I did a double take on it. I was like, oh hell yeah, good Bobby line. I was like, oh oh wait a minute, <laughs> yeah yeah, it's. It's yeah, it should it's gonna it should it should be on a t-shirt that you wear. Um <laughs> I mean I, we're we're definitely thinking about the same line. <laughs> oh one thousand percent, yes. Yeah, uh yeah. yeah, there's some really great lines in this. Um so after Dean puts on the ring, he appears somewhere else entirely, and Tessa is right there. They're like basically on a street in the middle of the day, and she tells Dean that for the next 24 hours, she he has to work with her and he has to touch and kill anyone who's on her list so that she can reap them. Yeah. It does bring up some weird questions that the show always sort of is like kind of clunky about the whole Reaper thing because 
there's that one episode where you see all the reapers and they're just like old dudes so it's like is that what she really looks like or like and then also right. is like the system of death like does he work with all of those reaper and is constantly everywhere killing people and the reapers just reap them like i don't fully understand the system uh that they have here because like does yeah well that that's interesting because in those reaper episodes we s- in that first Reaper episode, that Reaper is killing. Yeah, I think in the I think for this, it's I think the context is like it's like it's he's the trainee. You can't we can't make him death and just cut him loose. We gotta like sure yeah. he needs like, like a chaperone. Like yeah, I think in general him, yeah. Tessa probably has her list and just goes and does it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So empowered really... by death or something like that. You know what I mean? I, 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 that's the way it makes sense to me. Cause in that other Reaper episode, like where the, that pastor or whatever was yeah. like controlling the Reaper, the Reaper was killing. Yeah. So maybe he's, yeah, he's not really training to be, he's not really acting as death for days. acting as a Reaper for the day. I mean, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Although maybe I don't know, death could have been unseen in all of those. Yeah, maybe I, I, yeah, that doesn't really add up. It's just like that's just an ability death has, I guess. Like, and he's just like, okay, try this one part of what I have to do, maybe. Um, yeah, but yeah, and that and that that's the only thing that sort of like was confusing for me. But while Dean sure. is while Dean is with Tessa, Sam slips away from Bobby, and summons Balthazar. I love this guy. I've said it before when we first met him. I love this actor. Uh, Sebastian Rocher, I think is yeah, his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's super charming. I think he fits so well in the kind of like casual world of Supernatural where these beings of immense power wear like <laughs> deep cut V-neck t-shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I love, I just, I love his like cadence and the way he talks and stuff like that. It's cool to see him. Totally. Um, so when Sam enters this ab- abandoned factory to do to meet with uh, Balthazar, you can actually see a wooden sand casting model. Star Trek, the original series, made use of these forms in the corridors of the Enterprise as futuristic engineering bits on the walls. But so that, that, oh, that's, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. That's just a, a fun connection there. Um, that's neat. He asks Balthazar for a way to keep his soul out of his body. And Balthazar, who wants to screw over Dean and have Sam in his debt, gives Sam a spell for free. Yeah, he says, I'll give you the spell. Uh, It requires, he says, it it requires ingredients, which is easy enough, but it it also requires like an act. You have to scar your vessel um, with something so horrible that it's uninhabitable by your soul. And this is where we get into that thing that we were talking about, this taboo thing, because he says, patricide, got to kill your father. That is such like a horrible, awful thing that it'll, you know, makes it makes your vessel unfit for a human soul, basically. And uh, Sam is like, my dad's dead, you idiot. And, uh, and, 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 uh, Balthazar essentially gets a paraphrased version of family don't end with blood. Yes. Um, Needs the yeah. blood of his father, but his father needn't be blood. Just a cool yes. line in general. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I do think it's funny, though, because it, it's uh, like the, the <laughs> it, it, it's basically like he's making a horcrux like it's like you have to just you have to kill something and that breaks apart your soul but it's like this one's like you break you kill your father and it's like it's not in half but it doesn't remind me of that it's also interesting that it's like it's not just the act of killing you have it's that and this spell with yes. these other ingredients and stuff like For that sure. yeah uh so uh he says this and Sam is just like, all right. Uh, so the fucking, th- fucking cum gutter, Sam. I know. Oh, God, if he wasn't so hot, um, there is an, there is an interesting sort of se- sequences that then happen because then he shows back up and Bobby's just like, huh, uh, you were gone. Like I woke up and you were gone. And he's just like, oh yeah, I was just driving around to clear there. And you immediately know that Bobby knows something is up. Yeah. Like, like, Nothing. Everything's fine. 
it's it's so good because like the guys are like they're playing cards together they're like having drinks together they're playing the tensest game it's, of cards it's so fucking dead tense. silent dealing the cards it's it's so well shot and so well acted like the tension is so high um yeah, and i i they love do a good job. I love the moment because Bobby gets up to uh, go get a beer. That's when Sam attacks him and Bobby immediately catches him. Uh, he realizes yeah. what, what he's up to and he hits him over the head. Uh, it's. Yeah. And he says something like, I'm, I'm, I'm a was, midget, but I'm not. I was born. Oh, I was born night. yesterday. I was born at night, but not last night, which is such a fucking great line. <laughs> yeah. I was born at night. What does that even mean? Well, it's that, Wait a that, minute, what does that line even mean? So I was born at night, which doesn't mean anything, but it's just so that you can use the next line, which is like, not last night, which is like, I was not born yesterday. That's the point of the, it's a joke. Yeah, now that, yeah, I liked that line, and now I, now it doesn't make any goddamn sense. It makes sense. sense. It should, the point is, is like, I wasn't born yesterday, but it's a cute way of saying it. Hmm. Because it's just like, yeah, someone, it's like, oh, I was born at night. And it's just like, oh, you were born last night? And it's like, no, 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 I wasn't born last night. It's a cute way of saying I wasn't born last night, yesterday. I think you're being generous. I it's actually also, think this line doesn't make any sense This anymore. is also a phrase. <laughs> this is like a, like a colloquialism. Like, it is a, the, the, the show did. I was born, to be born at night? Born at night, and but not last night. That phrase is a is a phrase. That, that, that is a thing. Really? It's not from the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but a, that's an actual fun. phrase? Yeah. But it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something, though. I got it. I, I knew born it. Born at night, but not last night. Yeah, it's a cute way it of saying mean anything. That was instead of just saying I was born on a day, but not yesterday. It's a cute way to be like I was born. I. It's a cute phrase, and it means I wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> it, it totally makes sense. Uh, Look, hunters, write us in and tell us how how common this phrase is and that it makes sense. Are you looking it up? <laughs> I might be. God, you can never take my word for it. And I'm constantly proven right. Especially with stuff like this. <laughs> it is a Southern American. <laughs> yes. Like, like Southern U.S. Yes, yes. Term. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that I pro was might have been right. born at night, but not last. Night. Yes, but it makes that's sense. That's just a stupid thing. To, it's just a stupid thing to say. Jesus Christ. Anyways, unfortunately, Sam vanishes before Bobby can tie him up. So yeah, Bobby turns around to get a rope, and Sam's gone. And then Bobby kind of goes like, "Ah, shit." Yeah, I mean, because the reality is, it's like. Sam is now a better hunter than Bobby is. Bobby has more information, but Sam is a better hunter. Like, I wouldn't want to, and he's soulless. Like, it's a scary situation. Yeah. And it begins yeah. this very tense, like, series of sequences. I really like this bit of, like, yeah. Bobby going through the house and, like, he hears a thing and he's trying to, like, guess where we... <laughs> Because I mean, he partly he partly trained these boys, and so like he knows yeah. the moves that these guys are gonna do. But also, like they're be they're more equipped. But also, he knows they know. Yeah, he's like he's trying to like they're trying to both do the like. But he knows that I know this, so I'm gonna do you know like. So Bobby locks the door to the basement and locks himself in the closet, where Sam quickly finds him. Uh, Sam then breaks through the door with an axe. And uh, when Sam does this, Bobby says, don't say, here's Johnny, which is a reference to the infamous scene in the cult classic, or not cult, but horror classic, uh, The Shining from 1980. I like I like Sam in this moment because he's not like gone kill crazy. He's just like, Bobby, I'm sorry. It has to be done. Totally which is scarier? Soulless. Yeah, like... totally scarier. But I, I like... I mean, we've said it before. Get Jared to be blank, and he's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, true. Uh, I've always said a blank Jared is a great Jared. <laughs> now that's a phrase. Sure, um, yeah, yeah, it's a Southern um, American phrase. But I like it because you get the. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Bobby makes the joke about The Shining, but yeah. you have this like super violent cutting through the door and then this like very calm face pop in and go bobby i'm sorry i know you don't want to die but i i need you to die <laughs> so crazy 
Uh, but yeah. Bobby has set a trap door outside the closet. And because Sam goes, he's like, this is kind of on you. You, 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 you trapped yourself in. And he goes, no, I didn't. And the trap yeah. door underneath Sam falls. It's such a fucking cool moment. I love that. I love that Bobby, Bobby's house is like a full home alone, like horror mansion. The person I was uh, watching this with was like, oh, but like, did he get a, a contractor to come in and do that? <laughs> and I was like, I think yeah, he did it, it himself. He got permits. Yeah. He pulled permits. <laughs> um, but Bobby asks Sam what he's doing through the basement door because now he's stuck in the basement. But Sam won't explain. He then escapes the basement. Well, Sam, Sam, Sam first tries to get out, and Bobby's bragging about the door. He's like, yeah. "It's fucking steel and titanium, baby." Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, Sam is just like, I don't want this soul in my body. And then Bobby's trying to like talk to him. And kudos to Bobby for like keeping a cool enough head to be like, he's soulless. Yeah. But he realizes he hasn't heard from Sam in a bit. He goes, fuck, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta check down there. This is yeah. where he has the line that I love. Um, just he nobody... opens the door. <laughs> he opens the door, you know gun cocked and starts walking down the stairs and he says uh nobody kills me in my house but me I, and at first oh i was God. like what a badass and i was like oh wait a minute <laughs> oh bobby <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh no i nothing no phrase in this show has ever gotten to the core of you and i more than that line <laughs> it, i i had such like a double take because i was like <laughs> yeah bobby i was like no bobby <laughs> Nobody kills me in my house but me is such like that is a thing I would say. Yes, it's absolutely a line you would have written. It's it's yeah. fucking incredible. Um yeah. but Samus has already escaped the basement. Bobby tries to track him, uh going through the like the back of the of the house. Um Yeah, but... he's tr like tracking like blood. Yeah. Uh Sam had like popped the top out of the the um what what would we call storm it? doors the, the or whatever? cell yeah. the like the oh that's right yeah the 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 panic room yes thank you sorry he popped the top out of that and climbed it which I imagine was just all fucking upper body oh as he was God. going which is great but yeah. um but yeah so Bobby's like now out in the junkyard also the scariest place to look for a thing way to go Bobby how many times that. do we have to do this <laughs> uh, but Sam gets the jump on him and knocks Bobby unconscious. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Dean and Tessa are now busy killing and reaping souls. The first is an armed robber. So they basically show up inside of this convenience store and you see an interaction between like an armed robber and like this the store owner and then his son is right next to him and Dean comes in and is like, yeah. "Well, which like which one is it going to be?" And she's like, "They can't see you. You can't interact with them. Like this is fucking this is not this is a uh, 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 like a Dickens fucking story. Like you can't like you can't get involved. So just like watch as it happens." Yeah. Um and yeah, the, and the guy's like, I'm going to kill your kid or whatever. Yeah. He's like, get the stuff from the other drawer or whatever. And the store owner gets a, like, a, well, he drops the bag of loot. Yeah. And then when the guy goes to pick it up, he pulls his own gun out. He shoots the guy square in the chest. And the guy's like, <laughs> there's a weird moment that I, I, I think only me now would ever sort of double take on this. And I think it's, it's partly a thing from, and I mean, this is like still in TV all the time, but there's a moment sure. where Dean goes, so is he suffering right now to Tessa? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, well, let's just wait a minute and lets him yeah. suffer. And I was like, look, the guy threatened the kid and that's bad. And then stealing theoretically bad, depending on the scenario, uh, yeah. uh, guns are bad, but like, we don't know what this guy's situation is, why he's robbing a store with like what's going on in his life, where his mental <laughs> yeah, health is yeah. at. Like just to like, be like, yeah, this guy fucking deserves it. Cause he's a bad person. And I'm like, well, that's, that's the little cut and fucking dry. And then immediately after he kills the guy, he's like, yeah, I'll see you in fucking hell. And I'm like, again, this might be the first and only time. Like it's, I, I don't love that moment. I mean, I listen. I I agree. That's very twenty first century, very progressive of you. You know, I think our media usually codes us that like 
if the robber's nervous and he's like, I'm really sorry, then you're like, oh, he's having a hard time. And if he goes, I'm going to shoot your kid, you go like, well, he's evil. I guess it doesn't matter what happens to him. Yeah, but, I just like. That's I always... mean, you're right. In, yeah. You're right in real life, but like in TV language. Yeah, yeah. You're I just, not supposed like... to worry about it. It's not even like a like the show's bad or anything like that. It's more of just like this is a trope in general that like I don't love that it's just like yeah, if someone commits a crime they're a bad person and I'm just like yeah. ah yeah, it's just it's more of like a I hope that that this is a thing that like in like 10 years we're looking back on stuff like this and being like, "Oh yeah, that's really shitty." Now it's not, yeah. and I think it's only like I think people who are trying to be like mindful about things like that are seeing the problem. But again, they don't even handle it that badly, but it is not great. Yeah, yeah. Dean Dean is like pro Jafar in yeah. uh, Aladdin. He's yes. like, yeah. <laughs> he stole the bread. <laughs> exactly. Um so Street rat. <laughs> uh but he kills the guy and uh yeah, and then Tessa takes the dude away and yeah, Dean's just like, I hope you fucking choke on like hell, you piece of yeah. shit. Yeah. I'm death dean, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He loved that moment. Uh, the the second one we we walk on a guy who's eating a slice of pizza and and the person I mean, I they make him like, look so yeah. they make him look so pathetic just like folding a pizza into his mouth like, oh, oh. yeah and the person I was watching this with was like oh god it's not gonna be a heart attack is it and I'm like oh yeah uh poor guy oh, of course it is yeah, yeah. poor <laughs> it, it, I don't know did you have this it would have been better if he just choked he was eating so fast just yeah. make him choke. It's like the instant heart attack of like pizza and face. And he's like, and his heart attack happens so fast too. I you know? know, I know, I know they happen slightly differently for everyone. But again, when we're talking about like TV language, yeah. TV coding or whatever, we're used to like, you get the, uh, the arm, the, yeah. oh, and then someone goes like, is everything okay? And they go like, uh, like there's a yes. bit of a moment. But he's like eating. Dean goes, I bet this one's a heart attack. And then the guy just fucking like flips off yeah. the bench onto the ground. Like, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I don't know what this says, but I don't know if you had this moment as well when we came upon this guy, but you're like, I both thought, hey, he's not that old or that big. He's <laughs> like, I eat that pizza. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I definitely had yeah. a moment where I was like, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's true. He's he wasn't that old or or that big, but uh, God, if you could have seen inside those pipes. <laughs> um. So, uh, the Dean Dean uh, uh, kills the guy. Uh, he gets up and goes to walk away with uh, Tessa, and he turns back around and he's like, he's like, I just got to know, what does it all mean? And Dean tries to like muster up a response, and he just says, Yeah, it's all just dust in the wind <laughs> yeah the guy the guy basically is like that's not fucking comforting that's song lyrics yes well yeah he's just like yeah that's bullshit what's funny is that this is not only just like a funny reference to that song but this is also a thing that ted does uh, uh from bill and ted's excellent adventure when he's uh philosophizing with uh socrates <laughs> Or oh yeah socrates. socrates yes yeah, socrates. <laughs> yeah. so good um so dean doesn't have a problem with killing either man but the next person he has more of an issue with so yeah, yeah. they come upon a, a sick 12 year old girl with a heart condition uh sitting in bed with her with her father um and he immediately is just like which one is it and, and she's like it's the the girl and he's just like no immediately he doesn't want to do it um yeah there is a funny thing that's in this shot, which is the teddy bear that's in the little girl's hospital bed is an homage to the suicidal teddy bear in uh, uh, Wishful Thinking. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly yeah, the, So this this kid and her dad are like looking at photos in a photo album and the kid is like about to get prepped for surgery. So yeah. the idea is that Dean's going to like, they're going to take the kid into surgery. She's going to die in surgery. She's been sick for a while. Yeah, this is what happens. It's a heart condition, and Dean is just like not having it. He's like, it's so it's bullshit. I, the one guy was the one guy was like gonna kill a kid. The other guy was fat. Those are the two worst things you could be. I was fine <laughs> killing those guys, um, <laughs> but, but, but uh, this little kid did nothing wrong. Yeah. 
Um, there is, a, there's a moment where Tessa says like, Hey, this is destiny and fate. Like you have no choice. And, and Dean basically says like, that doesn't exist. She's like, there was supposed to be an apocalypse and that didn't happen. Like we've been fighting against destiny this whole fucking time. And it doesn't mean anything. Uh, so he decides that he's not going to touch the girl. Uh, so he- smart, good, good move, dude. Good impulse. I mean, yeah, fucking for once. Um, so <laughs> I'm not saying he's like 12 year olds or anything, but yeah. Anyways, Jesus. uh, geez. Uh, so her heart then miraculously uh heals, and the surgeon basically goes, All right, like, I don't, so every once in a while, this happens. And yeah, the, the dad's like, So she's just fine now, and he's like, Yeah, sometimes this happens. Like, the doctor's so <laughs> chill about it. He's like, Sometimes you cut a person open and everything's fine. Yeah, what do you mean, sometimes? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Uh, I don't know. I saw a werewolf last week. Uh, this weird. This world's weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it kind of it kind of works in the world of supernatural if you imagine that shit you like know. this happens in the world. Yeah, someone makes a demon deal and someone recovers. You know, for so, like it probably does happen a little yeah, bit. But yeah, I just yeah. love how casual this doctor is. He's like, listen, I don't want to tell you. I went to medical school for ten years. Sometimes you expect to open up a heart and it's just a shit show, and you get in there and you. Forget why you needed the surgery. <laughs> I mean, the unfortunate truth is that the um, the the knowledge inside the world's medical system is far less confident than you may hope it is, and I think well, that yes, yeah, and, I, and lots, I, lots of lots of mysteries uh, linger. Yes, exactly, yeah. and so I think that like yeah, uh, the, the, that theoretically also works for positive things as well. And so I'm actually not yeah. that surprised because like I've I've heard a, seen a lot of doctors who are like I don't know. So I, I'm kind of <laughs> sure. Not that surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um. Sure. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the surgeon is like, all right, well, peace out. I'm 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 fucking I'm bouncing. Uh. And yeah. I'm going on vacation. I count this as a win. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Go me. Yeah. He looks at the nurse and says, "Hey, pop off. Like you're you're sweet, 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 sweet. You you don't have to uh, do surgery today." And so. Uh, yeah. Get out of here, sweet cheek. Yeah, he smacks her and tells her to buy herself something pretty. Uh, but yeah, that means that yeah, he the... just throws a bunch of bills at her. <laughs> uh, but Jolene, the nurse, gets to go home early. This changes the course of destiny, though. And Jolene is injured badly in a car accident, which wouldn't have happened yeah. if she had stayed to operate on the girl. Uh, there's yeah. a moment where basically Dean and Tessa are like following this nurse and he's just like why are we doing this and then they slowly sort of like i there must be a weird time jump or something that happens because it's like she leaves just a a little (coughs) yeah maybe she just like pulled out of the building and like that's when she got hit i think it is something like that i mean she's still wearing her scrubs her name tag yeah all that you know she she just then uh you know Dean is like, well, shit. And Tessa's like, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew you knocked over a domino. There is, um, there's this fucking, like, God, there was a doctor that was acted like this in one of the previous episodes I think we made fun of, which is like, she, she dies. Like Dean has to kill the nurse. uh, And, and the second this nurse comes uh, like to Tessa, Tessa is like, Hey, look, you shouldn't have died, which it's it's the craziest fucking interaction I've ever seen. She she throws Dean under the bus so hard. She's got no time for Dean in this I, episode. I, I watched this. The person I was watching this with saw this moment and was like, if I died and then like had to like walk in on a training session and was literally like the person was like, yeah, you shouldn't have died. But this guy fucked up. And it's like, first of all, that's my life. Second of all. I'm the main character in this story. Like, <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Insane. How cavalier. I mean, she, she's like, this shouldn't have happened, but that's your life. Peace. I know he's not like officially training, like to be know, a long-term reaper or anything, but like, imagine that like anywhere, any other kind of training where it's yeah. like, hey, my burger didn't have mustard on it. would be yeah. like, well, this piece of shit's new. And yeah. They fucked it up. Yeah. That's you, what happens. I can't, I can't believe that someone as fucking stupid and ugly as this asshole is making your burger. <laughs> okay, okay, but like, can I get a new burger? No. This is the burger for the rest of your life that you get to eat, so I hope yeah. you enjoy anyway, it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
can I order a new one? You can, but it'll be the same. Yeah, yeah. You're never getting another burger. Actually, this was yeah, the one. It's... This is your last burger. <laughs> you you should have gotten a lifetime of burgers. Not now. This was the one, and it fucked up. <laughs> Corporate makes the rules. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Sometimes it's just your last burger. <laughs> Tell that to the guy in the park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Uh, so on the way uh, home, uh, uh, Dean is forced to kill her, and rest. Uh, and Tessa basically reaps her soul decades early. So the and, nurse and as she's walking yes. away with the nurse, uh, her husband crazy. dressed as a porno pizza delivery guy <laughs> shows up. Um. And and is obviously like super upset and you know cr- no, no, cries over the body kind of kind of. You thing. see in this interaction, he basically he goes directly from the hospital to the ho- to to the uh, from the hospital directly to the bar across the street. Which I don't think like <laughs> as I was watching this, I was like, it's should, right across the street. They, they probably sh- shouldn't be able to like from like a permitting standpoint be able to put a bar directly across the street from a hospital. Yeah, we'll put the the hospital there. We'll put the. Uh, the cigarettes and carcinogen <laughs> shop over there. We're gonna put the uh... yeah, the loaded weapons and nail gun store right here. Yeah, let's get all of the angriest, most vulnerable people. We'll put yeah. them in one building with yeah. direct access to all these other buildings. <laughs> That is like that thing. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever seen the thing where they always put the 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 basket robins next to Weight Watchers buildings? Is that like deliberate? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a oh, thing. that's so fucked up. That's a thing that happens like all over the world, the world, and especially in North America. Like I don't know, but which... it, it, and it, and it's and it's in that order. It's not yeah, like yeah. Weight Watchers like goes no. next to them to be no. like make this choice. It's no. Basket Robins goes like yeah. you're weak fuck, and we know it. Yes. <laughs> It's a Jesus crazy Christ. thing that exists. I've seen it like I mean, twice. It's probably good business, but that's pretty it's, fucked up. It's so dark. Yeah, I worked at a Taco Bell across the street from them, Jesus. and I was like, "Wow, yeah, it's that is fucking wild." Yeah, it's it's. Insane. I mean, whoever came up with that though got a big bonus. I mean, look here, like as two guys who who have and and did work in marketing. Uh, I mean, I wish that I had come up with that idea. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a brilliant idea, but it's very dark. Oh yeah. So, uh, uh, this guy Scott, her hu- the nurse's husband, uh, his name is uh, his real name is uh, Todd Thompson, who's actually previously uh, appeared on the show in the episode "The Kids Aren't uh, The Kids Are All Right" as Richard Keel. So, this is actually a guy that's existed uh, before on the show as Richard Keel, like yeah. the guy who played Jaws. Oh. I guess. Yeah. Huh. I believe that's Mr. Gilmore's. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh he he goes to a bar, gets drunk, and then immediately starts driving, and Dean catches it while they're sort of having this discussion about how much he fucked up. And so he he yeah, goes Tess is like, You gotta kill the little kid, and he's like, Give me a minute. And Dean kind of like death zaps his way into the car. This guy's like I love. I don't know if this is just a thing in the states or if it's real at all. If it's only yeah. for TV, he's drinking out of the bottle in a bag. Yeah, in the car. It's always with the bag. You know what's funny is though is like in a lot of like countries and stuff, or in like in some cities, do you you're allowed to drink alcohol open if it's in a bag. That's like a thing I know in Hungary, uh, like in Budapest. It's like you're allowed to drink but it. But it what's the be. difference between drinking it open and I drinking no it idea. open in a bag? I have no idea. I I feel I thought Montreal or some or some part of Quebec has that too, but maybe not. Um, but uh, crazy. Yeah, because it, it, don't they have an open carry thing in in Quebec or something? Like you're allowed to drink in public. I or... do love that in Quebec, open yeah. carry just refers to booze. But yeah, um, you, you can there are they're more lax about like beer and wine and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. no, I don't I don't think you can just be like publicly drinking. Mm, in I thought Quebec. it was yeah. even. I mean, God, in France when I lived there, you could drink publicly wherever. Totally, but like. But not with that kind of restriction on it. We would just bring like bottles of wine to go sure. sit by the river and, you know. Um, so, yeah, this guy ends up, he's like swerving everywhere with a bottle uh, uh, of alcohol and almost crashes into a bus. So Dean freaks out because, again, he can't interact when he's got this ring on. So he yeah. makes the decision and to break the rules and take the ring off. 
pops up in this guy's car <laughs> out of nowhere, freaks the guy out, and he just says, like, hit the brakes, and he pulls the car away from hitting a, a giant, like, a big bus full of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't uh, it have been hilarious if instead Dean was like, I need to win the bet. He kept the thing on. He zapped into the bus and killed the driver, so the bus stopped, and the guy could just whoa. keep going. <laughs> I mean, God, that's a trolley car fucking uh, thing, isn't it? Yeah. And the dean was like, ah, shit, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I mean, that is also just creating more dominoes. You can't do that. But Yeah, yeah. The rest uh, of the episode, he's like, shit, 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 yeah, shit, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking I Love Lucy with your cake factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, I like, killed everybody. I, I the only But it's Lucy. bodies. It's yeah. bodies coming down the legs. Like, Fuck, <laughs> damn it. Oh, no. Shit. <laughs> Just the entire world gets taken out in a day. Yeah. Except for this one 12 year old girl who then dies on her yeah. own. <laughs> yeah, because you wouldn't kill this kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I so also the- think I just want to I just want to say though, now that I'm thinking about it, you mentioned that when the the robber gets shot. Dean yeah. is like, is he in pain? And she's like, Yep. And he's like, give me a second. And he waits a bit to grant him death yeah. meaning that if he didn't do that he would just be shot and like that so Forever? how come yeah so how come the girl is like better huh shouldn't she just not have died but she's still in a bad place or whatever but they're like i don't know she seems totally fine in there well like, shouldn't it just be that death didn't come like shouldn't she still be in pain or sick or something like that but just not maybe dead? it's because of the active choice to hit he's like i am not going to do it it changes destiny because it's it's different between like i like because like if if all time is fluid and all that stuff like destiny or whatever if that was like a corporeal being or like time is something that you could actually like grab like it knows that a decision has been made theoretically like it's like oh this girl now won't be killed so she has to get better like I, that's the only way i could sort of think around that right right because he, he was always going to kill the guy but he was like he's making an active decision not to um right i see what you're saying yeah so uh, the accident is then averted at the last minute when Dean takes off the ring, jerks the wheel of the car, and sa- uh, Dean saves his and the other's lives. But because he took off the ring, he's now, of course, lost his wager with death. He gets out of the car, and there's an interesting moment because the guy like gets conscious and like look and and I, you expected I expected like something to happen. This scene exists for nothing, and the only thing I could think of is like it exists because time, I guess, like they needed to like have time happen but i just like this idea that this guy's like his wife dies and then suddenly this guy shows up in his car and then he goes away and he's like well hold on <laughs> like the rest of his yeah. life has changed yeah yeah right because he like literally watches dean and put the <laughs> ring he gets dean gets out of the car trying to call on tessa to like he's like look i lost but like the the least you could do is like put me back in my uh in where you got me and then she... it's also an assumption it's an assumption on dean's part that the guy's grief was just being drunk and driving and that he wasn't like i'm going to be drunk and drive it i'm going to cause like he yeah. <laughs> like that guy should wake up and be like well i'm still alive better get another bottle and a new car and just he just does it again, like. And maybe that's why they showed him watching Dean like disappear because he's just like something magical happened. I need to like not yeah. continue with my life. I I I think that's what it is. Yeah, and that that would actually make a lot more sense. Um, so he puts the ring back on, disappears, and reappears in the same location. But now he's in this sort of like dreamscape or whatever. And, he, and Tessa tells him that it's all over. But Dean says he's not done yet, and he goes back to the hospital. And he kills the 12 year old girl because he's learned his lesson. Yeah, but it's weird that he does it like execution style, like the (laughs) Boondock Saints. Yeah, he actually (laughs) uses two fingers and like like taps her hit forehead. (laughs) He does it from behind, just like, like, (laughs) oh, we are just dust in the wind. Uh, it, there is an interesting moment though, because they say that he can't interact with the world, but he does go to the father right before he kills her and goes like, "Hey, buddy, you better wake up." Which like is a kind of a sweet moment, but also is like maybe because he's in like a dreamscape, he can like sort of interact with him. I think it's that like 
it's the um I actually can't think of what I'm thinking. Of. Like I think that that's a very common Trope. setup though. You can't actually interact but like you can say something and someone just gets like the idea like yeah. I think we do it with ghosts a lot, yeah. you know, like that. I, I do think that that's not like an uncommon kind of setup. He says like you should say your goodbyes. The, the guy doesn't go like oh, goodbye. Like he doesn't like. Yeah. He's not like hypnotizing him or something. But that like whatever the intuitive senses are in your body, the things that like tell you like your gut instincts. Totally. That those can pick up whatever that sort of ESP kind of yeah shit is, you know. Um, but. He kills the girl. She uh, she appears as like a spirit or whatever, and she's confused. And Dean basically like now like says the lesson that he learned, which is that you can't mess with destiny or the natural order without setting off a chain reaction that has untold consequences. Yeah. So Tessa then takes him back to Bobby's house, where uh, he is literally just in time, <laughs> because Sam essentially has like. Now broken, uh, uh, Sam, uh, D- Bobby's like in this, uh, tied up now. In uh, is he in the panic room or was he in that like shed? I I, I wasn't like a hundred percent sure where the location was. That they I think stuck. he's in the like a shed. Or... Yeah, but basically, Bob uh, Sam has got his knife out and he's about to stab Bobby like fucking Dexter style through the chest, and just at the exact moment that he's about to stab him, Dean pe- appears and punches uh, Sam and knocks him out. It's a cool appearance because Dean appears, yeah. like catches the knife, yeah. and decks Sam. Goes, I'm back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm death. <laughs> yeah. uh, they restrain him now. Uh, they restrain Sam in Bobby's panic room while Dean is d- distraught because he can't keep Sam locked up forever because he's like, I lost this thing. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what to do, and they're both just like I don't know what they were thinking, but I'm like, are they gonna kill Sam? Like, I, I, like it feels like they're just like, I like we've got no other option. That's the vibe in the room for sure. Um, I mean, to be honest, given the events of the day, it wouldn't be their worst option. Yeah, I know but, that's not really like a, the Winchester way, but like, yeah, exactly. Dean goes upstairs as they're just sort of trying to figure things out. And death has arrived and is sitting in Bobby's uh, kitchen eating hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Is it like a bacon wrapped hot dog yeah, or something is. like that? Yeah, 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 I think from Pink's in LA. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so he's uh, he's basically like, all right, you lost. Like, this is where we're at. Um, there is a moment. So when he's returning the ring to death, and thus removing it from the Winchester's ability to use it anymore, it is an important plot point for the entire rest of the series. As Death has already said that he will eventually reap God himself, theoretically, um, this makes Death uh, Death's ring the most powerful item in the entire series, as it would have allowed them to kill anything else they've ever they ever have to deal with. Yeah, it's- which is crazy. Crazy a that for a year and a half Dean's just been sitting on it. Yeah, and and they never and B, use it. it. B that he never tried. Yeah. So a that he kept it that long, but B that he like that he never tried, and then way earlier death would be like, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Like it's yeah. I find it so interesting that death is just like has never come for it. That like, but also for like a for like a year, Dean is like being like a dad and stuff like that like you imagine ben goes out to the shed and goes like oh a ring i'm gonna play dress up and he like puts the ring on kills a bunch of his friends Fucking... let's go play tag kills himself like, <laughs> like i don't know how that works. oh no yeah look you're at an age discovering your body i get it um... no 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 because dean touches his face oh, and you can't sure. kill yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. okay there is yeah, a not with the ring. Yeah, but I do think it's it, it kind of talks about destiny in that fact because like death must have always known that he was going to get the ring when he did because he never comes for it. It also made me think about the other rings. Yeah. Like if you put on War's ring, would you get that like 
paranoia inducing yeah. kind of like if you put on famine's ring would you just start like Sickness like eating stuff. everyone's yeah. energy and every like you know what i mean yeah it's yeah it's an interesting fact that never really ever comes back up in the series um yeah but death speaks to dean about his failure uh his failed tenure as death and is pleased that Dean has learned his lesson about cheating death and disturbing the natural order. And he's even like, look, he's like, I gotta be honest. He's like, I'm just kind of surprised that you figured it out. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I knew that he's like, I, I'm a guessing that like, I'm guessing that he knew that he was eventually going to get his ring back. But I, I, I guess he probably didn't know if Dean was going to learn the lesson. Like he probably didn't see right. that at least. Right. And so I think it's, I think it's interesting that he's just like, he's like, I'm glad that you learned this lesson. And he he's, uh, but Dean, Dean makes this reaction where he goes, he's like, look, he's like, I was clearly like, he's like, can you, do you have the balls to tell me that this was always, always rigged? And death plays like coy, <laughs> which I think is very interesting. He's like, I have no idea yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I do, I do think that you're right. The thing that you said before where, it's like death is such like an incomprehensible level of being like he's beyond angels is beyond yeah. you know that that monologue that we got in season five was like one day i'll reap god i think i'm older than him maybe i'm not who knows we like all of that kind of yeah that kind of thing and the idea that like who the fuck are you and he's like you're you summoned me to fix your small little fucking <laughs> problems and shit like that and he's like i am actually pretty entertained by this you yeah, know. I mean, because again, it's like that ant thing, right? Where it's like and one ant comes to you and is just like, hey, can you bring that other ant back from the other side of the house? And you're just like, I mean, I couldn't care less about this problem. Yeah, I mean, I could. Yeah, yeah. But like, why would I ever? Like, <laughs> Yeah, if an ant told me I owed it, I'd be yeah. like, well, yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, it's very like humorous, I think. Um, but even though... Dean was unable to keep his ring for uh, uh, on for 24 hours. Death decides that he's still going to retrieve Tim. So, which I like it because he's he does that thing where it's just like, and and you failed to to make me not want to save Sam. Like it's like it's like yeah. Which I mean, the, I th in in a way, if Dean had succeeded, it's possible he might not have learned the le like. It, yeah. You sort of get the like. It's more important that he learned the lesson and death knows that, you know, I yeah. think that's the, the moment of surprise is where death says like, oh, you did learn it. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. You know, like that's where death is like, all right, good. That's what I wanted out of this. As long as you understand what I'm doing here. Yes. I'll do it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, I think he has a larger thing, which is like, he's not saying that and and he kind of goes into that because he's basically like, he's like, look, he's like, I'm going to do this because like, I've fucking never met anybody who's like escaped like me so much has like fucked with like the entire, like this, all this angel shit. Like, he's just like, he's like, look, he's like, I'm saving you guys. Cause like, this is entertaining. Like this is weird. And I don't experience weird very often. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. You said like no, nobody has like compromised the fabric of natural law like the Winchesters. However, you're serving a purpose, and so because, but I think it's more of just like out. like you can do this, but just like be aware that your actions your actions have consequences. But like, yeah, yeah. keep it up because like I don't know, this is this is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but he does say that Dean needs to keep digging on the topic of souls before going to hell and coming back with Sam's soul, which yeah. is an interesting thing. And I think we need to hold on to this because I remember this moment too, but I don't actually ever remember what the fuck he's talking about. Like, I actually don't know where that is in the sort of continuity of the show. Oh, do you not? I okay. I, I do. Oh, do you? Interesting. I actually do believe it or not of all the things I remember yeah. from this season. I do remember. Um, and when it does come up, you'll be like, Oh yeah, it's that. But oh, like, okay, um, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, so Dean and Bobby then see death enter the panic room because Dean's just like, oh shit, and he's like, is Sam still down there? And he like runs down, and we hear Sam screaming, and this is that moment we were talking about. 
and death is already in there and he's got like a old timey like doctor bag like, which i love uh, oh so good god it's a perfect yeah, yeah. like a uh, piece of equipment for this guy i love it it is it is yeah and he's got a bag with holding sam's soul death tells yeah. the the uh, protesting sam he will put up a wall in sam's mind and he advises that it's going to itch but don't scratch at it yeah, yeah and sam's telling him to stay away and the episode ends with sam screaming for help from dean as death returns sam's soul to his body and this is what I mean. Like, Sam is just going, no, no, I don't yeah. want this. No, I don't want, no, no, no. He basically like, says, I do not consent. It's pretty, like, I, I know we just watched Sam almost kill Bobby, but, like, it's pretty fucked up. That's how much Sam needed to do to make us feel even slightly okay with this moment. Like. Yeah, yeah, basically. He yeah. needed to basically try to kill our favorite character, and we're still just like, but I still don't think that's all right. Yeah, I think they went too far. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's interesting. Like that, it's that much of a reaction. But that is the end of this episode. So let's talk. Well, about, I mean, you know what that uh, means. Fuck, it's really time like for it. uh, it's time for the fuck you Samuel Campbell Memorial. Who was the biggest asshole this episode segment? Yes. I am going to say that I think the biggest asshole this uh, seg- the, this episode uh, was Dean. Really? Because I think that, like, he was being very flippant about, like, the way that, like, uh, Destiny needs to work. He, he fucking, and he also, like, tr- he forced his brother to do a thing that he did not consent to. And right. And as much as he wants to admit that, like, I mean, they're having a discussion basically. I mean, this whole episode, this whole season doesn't really ever give you a full answer, but it's like, is Sam still Sam without his soul? That like, that doesn't, nobody really answers that. And so the only way this Well, because episode... even Sam has started referring to himself as like separate. Like, yes. Dean just wants his little brother back. I'm not that, like, he, even he has started but separating that's, that. But it, I think the thing for me is like, both versions don't don't they both make this a bad moment because basically if he is sam he is telling you to do something that he is telling you not to do the thing that you're doing if he is a separate person that still is not okay because that is a separate person asking you not to do something. <laughs> like, yeah, regardless, yeah. you were doing. Yeah, you're you're snu- you're snuffing out a new individual yes. to put someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like, the Wonder Woman 1984 problem. <laughs> yes. Like it's yeah, no matter yeah. what, it's like it is not okay. The only way that yeah. you can like justify it is by saying, "Well, this person's a murderer." Therefore, but then that just promotes the death penalty, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's fine to kill a person because they killed they tried to kill somebody else <laughs> like yeah it's a little it's a little eye for an eye yeah, yeah so, like it, yeah. It, it, it's sort of like it doesn't work the only way that it even slightly works is you're like that is sam but he's unwell and this is forcing him into wellness that he couldn't make a decision for himself but even still because this wellness is a form of abuse it still doesn't work (laughs) yeah listen that's a very compelling argument i actually it's a toss-up for me i have two okay one that i think is a lesser one and one that i think is a pretty compelling one okay um the lesser one for me is um is tessa uh, for fully throwing Dean under the bus and ruining that other person's death. I mean, yeah, that was pretty bad. And like, I, you're not wrong. The, her, like her fundamental function is to ease people's transition <laughs> into death. And the first thing she does is go like, I'm going to be honest with you. This wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, that's not great care. Yeah. That's... Now take that knowledge into the afterlife. <laughs> like... The thing you can't reverse and she and she goes like you were forever. supposed to have you were supposed to have kids, grandkids. Like oh, she gives so many that more doesn't details need to than happen. is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's number one. Yeah. My other one is it's Balthazar, who knows damn well that this is a bad idea either way. Sure. And is just sowing discord by being like, yeah, I'll give you a spell. It'll keep your soul out. They'll be doing work for nothing. Yeah. You'll be a soulless like monster, which is obviously a thing they don't want. And uh, while you're at it, uh, kill Bobby. Yeah. You know, like 
<laughs> it's Balthazar is just kind of like, I don't know, blow up your life. I do kind of like the idea that maybe that that like that, that wasn't even part of the spell. That's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, yeah and you're also gonna need to you're gonna need to get me like a rack of ribs. Yeah, it's like that scene from Guardians of the Galaxy where he's like, get the the leg from that guy, and then he gets yeah, it. And he's yeah, just like, yeah. oh, I just thought it would be funny. Was he hopping around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so have you seen the have you seen the holiday special? Yes, by the so way? good. With Kevin Bacon. Where he gets Bucky's arm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. So good. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, so, yeah, those were our uh, biggest assholes of this episode. That's how big our assholes were this episode. Yeah, these were some gaping assholes. Jesus. <laughs> they were some prolapsed assholes. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to uh, fill a bowl with water and gently soak these assholes. <laughs> so, with that, do you, who is uh, what's your review for this episode? Oh, right. Um, okay, I still feel like this episode suffers a bit. By kind of playing two different genres at the same time. At yeah. the same time. As we've talked about it, I understand structurally kind of why it's important to show Sam in that extreme so that we can kind of be on side with forcing the soul back in him. But the Sam hunting Bobby thing could be more. And obviously it can't be like the whole episode. You need a B plot, you know, but, but that worked so well. Those setups, the like, the little bits of the actual hunt that we got. And making Sam like the monster of the ep would be great. It'd be awesome if it was like that, you know, I, I don't know what the setup would be. I shouldn't try to pitch that, but like, it would be great to give it more space. And then the same thing on the other side, you know, I actually think they commit a decent amount of time to Dean's story in this one, but that kind of like, it's almost like kind of schmaltzy, you know, it's a wonderful life. There's a lesson here sort of thing. Yeah. It's like almost like an incompatible genre with like suspense horror. I don't think I like them together. And and so I, I, I don't know how I would solve that because I do think it does make sense to see the extreme Sam Bobby thing and then be like, well, he beats the soul, you know, like yeah. that's the ultimate lesson there. But but tonally, that episode doesn't jive for me. But Julian Richings' death is amazing. Yeah, we get to see Balthazar. I love that actor; he's great. Tessa's back, <laughs> and despite being kind of a menace, she's very good. Um, the Jared and Bobby performances are excellent. Um, in this one, Dean's great in this. Performances are good. I I ultimately I, I can't hate on it too much actually. Mm -hmm. I think I would give this I'd give this four nobody kills me in this house but me. <laughs> yeah, I it's funny. I I think I actually like this episode a lot more than you did. Um Okay. I I really, really enjoyed this episode. And I actually like the juxtaposition of those two versions of this. I think it's the uh, the thing that I really liked is it's basically like a competition of like who can uh, who can achieve their soul thing first, which I really love. It's like who, sure. like who can who can either like bring it back or who can force it so that no, nothing can get back. So I like that these two things are happening. I think you're forced to if you're going to do something so drastic as to like basically like force something against somebody's will you need to make that person look so bad that that thing needs to happen. So I think like you're sort of like 
you're kind of forced to at least if if they were two separate episodes it's the only way other way it could have worked was like the previous one was like sam trying to kill bobby but then there's no real good way to end it except for getting his soul back so i think you are kind of forced to have these two genres i don't know if i would want a full episode of either of these i think we've already kind of gotten the tessa dean thing from the beginning of season two or whatever like i don't think that i would want another one that's so much like that and i think like We've, yeah. gotten, we've gotten a bad Sam in the episode where he's uh, possessed by a demon. So I think like I don't want too much of that. And I do like the interaction between him and Bobby. But you also can't make Bobby look too bad. You also can't make Sam too evil. So it's like you have to do this very tight rope walk of like showing him being like calm about this. But like I don't know how much I don't, it couldn't sustain a whole episode. So you need to distract right. Dean throughout that entire thing. So I think that I get what you're saying, which is they're very contrasting episode types but i don't know if i would like i don't think either works on their own regardless you you would definitely need something to balance them out maybe they're too extreme but it doesn't bother me um i yeah of course fucking the performance from death is really good tessa is really like great at this balancing sort of it's just this just that one weird moment where she fucking tells off like the tells this girl like it, it that's so weird uh, uh, does not need to exist. It's so unprofessional for someone yes. whose whole thing is like, I just want to do my job. Yeah, because that's her, her gig. She's like, I don't know why the boss is playing around yeah. with you. That's up to him. But I just want to do my job. And then she gets the opportunity to do her job. And she's like, Hey, you're gonna think about this forever. Uh, this was a goof. Yeah. Anyway, I think they do a really great job. The writing is so interesting because you 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 accomplish a lot in this episode, and you some great. Yeah. I mean, the I mean the fact that Robert England is in this, and we barely even talked about him. Like, I mean, that's the other thing is like, you know, maybe it's just a thing where he was in town, and they were like, "Do you want it?" And he was like, "Yeah, sure." Like, that's fine. But you'd think on a show like Supernatural, you get yeah. Robert England, and that's how you use. I him? know, I know, I know. This is but- the other thing. Part of this episode is also like a flatliners thing and it just works and it's fine and then you leave it. Yeah, yeah. So this episode is actually three different episodes. Yeah. But for me, it never felt like rushed or jam-packed. It felt very fluid and like just enough information from all of these different things. Sure. I think that those like all of those performances were so good the tension between fucking dean and uh, uh and uh or from bobby and sam was so well written and so well directed i think that the it was really interesting in that beginning of the episode because they basically set up his his like caring of children so much because dean's also like been pretty cavalier about killing people throughout these seasons but then they they remind you of his care about children by bringing in the ben note at the very beginning so you're like oh yeah no he has got a, like a a soft spot yeah. for kids which works out really well because then it yeah. basically ties you it's like it's a reminder that he cares about like he does really have these deep feelings and he's got this family and it's changed him now and so when yeah. he then has to go do this kill a kid it's like oh no 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 like that and they also remind you with the the kid from the the convenience store I will say the only way that they could have improved this though was if they had sort of reversed it and he killed any or if they get rid of the sick kid and they bring in and he did kill the little I mean it'd be fucked up but he killed the kid in the convenience store because like at the end of the day like that sick kid was going to die that kid was did nothing wrong I I I think yeah I see what your point is and it would be interesting if like the you know, maybe he just goes like it has to happen. You know, she she makes yeah. him do it or whatever, and he does it. But his kind of like fuck you back because then he kills the yeah yeah the guy, and then that sets off a thing. Totally, you know. I just uh, yeah, and that fucking the yeah the guy thing kind of bothered me. So it's like it's definitely not a perfect episode to me, but there's just so much good. It's so well written, so well directed. I uh, it, it's it it does a really great sort of like overarching thing and has a bit of like a monster of a wiki kind of thing without an actual bad guy. I think that, but you get fucking death. So it makes it worth it. Like I, I love this episode. So I am going to give this 4.5 bacon wrapped hot dogs out of five. Whoa. Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, Those were our reviews. But before we let you go for the day, we've got a note from a fellow hunter. Ooh, let's have it. Absolutely. From Alexis, who asks or says, uh, your podcast helps me get through the monotony of work. Thank you guys so much. 
A few things that I found funny throughout the series that my family has commented on is that whenever there is a salt and burn case, my mom always wonders aloud whether or not there has to be a specific salt to gasoline ratio. <laughs> Which I, I mean, there certainly there certainly doesn't seem to be. They're pretty like whoa. they just kind of like sometimes it's just like little squirt of lighter fluid. Yeah. Sometimes they're dumping gasoline. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, my sister's commentary is more episode specific. In season one, episode three, "Dead in the Water," my sister comments, "Who takes a bath in the dark? Literally, turn some lights on." <laughs> How are you supposed to die? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was a note from Alexis. Thank you so much for reaching out, Alexis. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, if you have other notes or things that you found about the show or comments about things that we've already said in this episode, please reach out to us through our Discord. That's right. If you go to patreon.com slash ghostfacers for only $1 a month, you get access to Angel Radio. It's our fun community Discord server. People in there are super nice to talk about the show, talk about stuff we like, talk about monsters, all sorts of fun stuff. Absolutely. Helps to support us. If you want to uh, 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 send us a note the way that Alexis has, all you can, uh, all you need to do is uh, email us at ghostfacerspodcast at gmail.com or reach out to us through our various social media platforms. That's right. We're at Ghostfacers Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can get our episode automatically every single week. Give us five stars on whatever that platform is, and we will read it on a future episode of the show. If it's not Apple Podcasts or like Facebook, we won't get notified. So just make sure to take a screenshot and send us an email. Also, we've got merch. So if you want to be a lore whore, all you have to do is show the world by buying some shirts on ghostfacerspodcaststore.com. And we have another podcast that you can subscribe to. Yeah, the Dr. DC podcast. If you like how we talk about lore and uh, I was going to say merch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you love how we talk about merch, uh, no, if you like how we talk about lore and monsters and stuff like that, you might enjoy how we talk about the lore of superheroes and comic books and how those things work over there. So you don't need to know anything about it. It's about DC comics, but yeah, go check it out. Also, if your name is lore, uh, you know, send us a DM, say what's up. Yeah, if your name is Laura, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. My wife and I have an agreement. <laughs> yeah. I could just know people have that name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is it for this week. Say goodbye, bitch. Jerk. podcast.